Hey, what's up guys? It's Theo from Funo Concepts. So I know some of you find After Effects quite difficult to learn and most of you don't even have it installed on your computer. So today we are going to be creating this entry video in Adobe Photoshop. Let's just get started. Welcome to Fino Concept. Click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. All right, so let's go ahead and open up our application. For this tutorial, I'll be using Photoshop CC 2019, and I'll go ahead and create a new document. Now, since this is going to be a video, I'll always go with 1920 by 1080 and just click on OK or create. Now, before we get into the timeline aspect of this, there are four shapes we are going to create and we are going to be using the rectangle tool to create all of them. So let's select the rectangle tool view on your keyboard. The first one, I'll just make it look like this. Um, the shape doesn't really matter because we can always alter the shape using the move tool. So the first one is going to be somewhere around here. Um, I'm going to be gauging with my eyes most of the time. So just bear with me and I'll have it somewhere around here. So, like I said, we are going to be creating four of these. So I'll just duplicate this using Control J or still with a move to active. I'm just going to be using the Alt key by holding it down to get these two icons and I can just click and drag to create a duplicate. So I have three at the moment. Um, I'll select everything and make the size smaller so I can add in the third one or the last one actually. So I'll also click and drag this to the edge like this. Now for the fourth one, um, I don't need it as much. So I'll just make it um, quite invisible like so. And I think that is okay. So what I'm going to do is change the entire colors so that I'll be able to tell the difference. Um, let me name this one, two, three, and four. So for one, um, let's just go with a blue, green, turquoise color, um, uh, something like this. I think this is okay. Um, for the second one, let's go with red or a dark color yeah i think somewhere around here is okay and again i'll select any color let's make this much bluish or purple i think purple or mauve looks nice let's make it darker too and the third one let's go with blue again this time a darker blue like so and i think this is looking nice so for the last three that is number four number three and number two i'll have them overlapping the number one so something like this is okay now whilst holding down the control key i'll click on this icon right here so you can see if i hold down the control key and i hover this point the cursor changes to this white with a black stroke and i hold down the shift key also the shift key because um, i don't want to be clicking and dragging and it's going to be deformed i want to hold down the shift key so that it will move vertically sorry horizontally without it deforming so what i want to do is just click and drag it to um something like this about yeah about 19 or 20 degrees should be just fine and i'll bring it back to the beginning like so click on ok to comment all right this is looking impressive already but i already have um a dark area here so i have to get rid of that and i'll just let's stretch it out like this all right so i think at these positions is okay um for the one i'll have to stretch it to cover up the white part I have in there. No, let's just delete the background. I don't even need it. All right. So yeah, this is what you are going to be beginning with. Before we can continue, um, let's go ahead and make all of these smart objects. So I'll select the first one, right click, go to convert to smart object. The second, and I'll do the exact same thing for everything else. So I'll go into the first layer, which is number one, double click on it to get back my image. So I have a bunch of images I'm going to be using. Um, the first one is going to be, um, let's use this one. So I'll just paste it in here like so. Make sure it fills up the entire screen like this and I'll comment OK. I'm going to have the image at the back of the color or the rectangle I have in here. So I'll bring this at the bottom and I'll change the color of this. Sorry, I'll change the blend mode to something like, yeah, I think color is OK. And probably I should make it darker because this image looks too whitish. So I'll double click on this and make the color a bit darker. So something like this should be just fine and I click on OK. So if I close this and save it up, it should automatically appear here. Um, I think I should have brought the image 
to the right a little bit so double click again um let's send the image to the right close it up and save it i think this is much better so i'm just going to be doing the exact same thing for number two and number three number four we are going to leave it as it is for number two and three it's a little bit different because they are overlapping so let's just open two up and for this i'll just be using this image so i'll drop it in here like so so what i'm going to do is actually duplicate this layer so Control j and one is going to be on top and one is going to be at the bottom so for the one on top i'll change the screen mode to color like i have already and for the one at the bottom i'm actually going to select the image which is here right click and go to what create clipping mask so what this does is the image is going to show only at where these things are and let's see if we can stretch it out a little bit I think something like this should be okay and click on no okay so let's um go ahead and save this up and see how it's looking like all right so we have these edges probably this is not the best image to be using so um give me a second let me find a better image so i think this one will work much better so i'm go ahead and save this up all right and it is showing like how we want it to so for number three again there's that same thing double click duplicate this because the image is going to be in the center i'll come back to um my pictures and i'll be using this one so i'll paste this in here like so right click and go to create clipping mask so it will be on top of that and i also change the top one to um, blend mode color if you think it is too bright just double click and make it darker make whatever color you're using darker and click on okay so um let's stretch this out a little bit so over here and over here and this is also going to be hiding the image oh no all right i think i think somewhere around here should be just fine so i'll comment okay and i'll go ahead and save this up all right now this is looking cool so let's go ahead and add in a few text so for this um i'm going to type in something like um birthdays I'm using the left align in this case um, about 48 points. The second one I'm just going to be using the regular Gotham and I'll use the book version which I'll go into the character so window character and I'll change it into italics like so. I'll obviously have to make this much smaller because I can't see when it enters the other side. So somewhere around 24 should be just fine. Okay so this being here should be awesome. And this is going to be on top of this text um, which is number one so i'll just have it on top of number one i can also go ahead and add in a drop shadow so go into fx and click on drop shadow just to make this a bit different from the image i have in the background so opacity of about 70 should be just fine and the angle is going to be around 60 or 60 yeah 60 should be just fine so i want the exact same effect over here so i'll just duplicate this Control j and i'll just bring this here you can see because it's at the back of this image so i'll bring it on top and this can be um let's call it portrait i'm using this because um, i'm a photographer so portrait um beautiful faces yeah i think this is fine i'll place this um somewhere around here Control j to duplicate one more time and i have this also here so again that is going to be on top of number three I think this one should come down because it's covering her face i don't want that so this is going to be um weddings best day of your life i'm now since this is down i should also bring all of these down and probably just change the alignment all right so again let me go ahead and save this before my computer goes off let's just call this intro and I'm going to be adding in the last text, which is going to be on number four. And um, that's going to be something like um, Theo Labby. All right, so I think something like this is okay. Um, I'm going to make everything all caps and increase the size to something like this. All right, so this is what I'm going to settle with. I want the exact same um, shadow effect. So I'll just right click on any of them, um, go to copy layer style. 
I'll come back to my text, right click and go to paste layer style so that I have the same shadow effects on all of them. So this is our final design. And this is looking quite okay. Now the interesting part that is animating this whole thing. So um, to do that, go into window and make sure that timeline is checked. It should be somewhere here and it should pop up just at the bottom. So let's fit this to screen and click on create video timeline. By default, Photoshop is going to create a five second video timeline. So what we want to do is extend this to about 15 seconds. So um, just selecting any of the images or the text, I'll just click and drag and you can see the duration over at the top right of the cursor. So I want to stretch this to about, let's start off with 10 seconds. If it is too small, then we increase it later on. So I'm going to stretch everything else up to that 10 second mark. All right, so now that we have everything i think everything is looking quite awesome so what we are going to be doing is animating all of these so to prevent ourselves from making a mess um let's highlight everything group them up or just hit ctrl j to create a duplicate now let's select the original and group them up using ctrl g so let's go ahead and hide the original for a second because at any point in time um, we want to be able to come back to our original and make some changes all right, so let's start animating. So what we are going to do is our animation is going to start from the left and move over to the right. So the first part is going to be for number four. So we are going to start from the top and we'll move over to the bottom. So for number four, I'll click on this arrow right here and I'll move about um, 20 frames and I'll create a keyframe for transform. So this is where I want it to end. So I'll move to the beginning and I'll slide this over to the left hand side whilst holding down the shift key so that it doesn't move out of proportion. Then I'll move to about um, one second. So this time around, I'll be animating the text. So I'll click on that arrow, go into transform, and I'll move to the 10 second frame. That is the beginning. And I'll also move this over like so. So if you go ahead and take a close look, the shape is going to come in, then later on followed by the text. And we have something like this. Now this is what I'm going to be doing for everything else. So um, let's do one more for the shape three and the text three, then I fast forward from there. So if I open up the options again, I move 20 frames. That is going to be the beginning for our image. I always start with the image before the text itself. So that's something you can keep in mind. I'll create a keyframe first, then I'll move over to the beginning. That is one second. Then I'll move this over to the edge whilst using um, the shift key so that it doesn't distort. Then this should be the beginning of, sorry, this should be the end of the text. So I'll create a keyframe for that, transform keyframe. I'll move over to the center of this and I'll also move the text over like so. So if I start playing, I should probably have it all the way. So let's hide, completely hide this. So you can see it is over here. Now, if I move over to this one too, let's completely hide it. So our image is somewhere around here. It's not showing on the screen. So if I go ahead and play this, you can see the shape comes in followed by the text. Then number three comes in followed by the text. So that's what I'm going to do for number two and number one. Let me fast forward from here. All right, so I'm done. If I go ahead and show you all the keyframes, let me just move to the top. You can see it's just sliced in like this and over here. Then the next animation is also going to start and over here, followed by in the next number three and over here. Then the last part, which will also end around here. Now, at this moment, the background is empty, so Photoshop is going to um, make it wh white or black, but I'll just add in a solid color and make it white myself so that at least I can um, pretty much select which color I want at any point in time. Now, the cool thing about this is at any point in time, if you want to change the text or the image, you can just double click. So if I want to change image two, I can just double click and change the image from here. So in case I want to use, I don't know, probably this image, I can put this image in there, make sure it fits the entire screen, clip it, Control W to close it up and save this. 
and it appears like so and basically that is it thank you guys for watching all right so thank you guys for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you like to watch more of our videos hit that subscribe button and as always don't forget to share with your family and friends this is still for final concepts and i'll talk to you guys in the next one